Compression socks, calf guards, recovery tights, it really doesn't matter what you call them. More importantly, why would you choose to wear them? Well, tight knee length socks can vary in their purpose. Today, we're focusing on the ones that offer compression and they do split opinion. You will see some pros who train, race and recover in them, but how much evidence is there actually to their benefits? In order for compression socks to actually do their job, they need to fit correctly. And when you get medical stockings, they're obviously measured accurately and even prescribed, but any of us can go and buy a pair of running socks in any size and start wearing them. Now, providing you don't have any underlying medical conditions, then you can't go too wrong as long as you're obviously not having them too tight that they're cutting off your circulation. But the better the fit, the bigger the advantage of wearing them. Unlike a patient lying in a hospital bed, as athletes, we're usually moving and therefore our muscles are contracting and relaxing, which is going to be aiding our veins and returning that blood back to our heart. And this is the aim of compression socks and one of the reasons that they need to be graduated in their compression. Any decent compression socks will offer a graduated support, so they'll have more pressure at the bottom of the lower leg than they will do higher up. If you imagine a tubular type of sock, then that's actually going to have the complete opposite effect because your calf is normally bigger than your ankle and therefore it'll exert more pressure at the top as opposed to at the bottom. And compression sock companies will usually take specific or require specific measurements to make sure you've got that correct fit. So you'll have to take measurements from certain parts of your lower leg. And yes, they do cost a little bit more and involve a little bit of time in doing your research and your measuring. But unless you want to wear a knee length sock purely for fashion or warmth, I'd suggest spending that time. So when should you actually wear this unique garment? Let's look at whilst running first. And you see runners and triathletes of all levels wearing long socks. And quite a few of the elite marathon and track runners are synonymous with wearing compression socks. And if an athlete is susceptible to getting sore calves or maybe has an injury, then it could help reduce that discomfort. And there is actually some evidence from certain research studies that prove wearing the correct fitting compression socks can reduce the oscillation of the calf muscle. So the amount that the muscle moves up and down, which in turn can can potentially reduce the micro damage that's happening at that muscle from a race or a tough session. Or it could be as simple as comfort, whether there's evidence behind that or not. Sometimes wearing compression socks can just feel nice and feel like it's reducing the fatigue at your calves. Whether you can measure it or not, it doesn't really matter. And then there is even the warmth factor. You, If you're running in the winter and you want to wear shorts and compression socks instead of, say, tights, and it leaves your knee feeling nice and free. And you'll see a lot of cross-country runners opting for that. And also, you get a certain amount of protection from them. That could maybe be known more as calf guards, but if you're running on trails or through lots of, sort of scratchy low grass, they'll protect your legs. And if you're doing ultra marathon events, for example, they could even reduce some of that potential swelling. Many compression specific brands will actually offer a different type of sock when it comes to recovery. As this is when your body's actually going to need more of the aid from that venous return because naturally you're going to be moving less and you've got the option of having a recovery sock or a recovery tight. But the jury is out as to how often, how long to wear them for, and when. Now, I personally used to use a full length recovery tight after doing some really hard session for a few hours and then I'd take them off before bed. But after an ultra, I've actually worn calf compression socks to bed just to help to reduce that horrible ache you get after a really tough race. If you do want a more effective way of recovery, then you're probably going to need to look for something that's got a pumping style of action. So you can get those compression kind of big sock things that get filled with ice water and actually pump it around your legs so help with circulation and are great at reducing that edema but obviously they are more expensive and they're not something that you can just put in your kit bag.
And then you've got travel. You can often spot triathletes traveling through an airport terminal by the telltale sign of the compression socks on display. I mean, that said, doctors and airlines do recommend wearing compression socks. And the fact that you can buy them in the terminal shows there's obviously a demand for even just off the shelf compression socks. However, being able to actually move on a long haul flight, whether that's just moving your ankles or doing calf exercises, will be far more effective at getting the blood flow and pumping in that venous return. But compression socks still will help reduce the amount of swelling and get your legs back to normal more quickly but again a well-fitting pair will have a greater benefit. I've touched on the styles available. If you want to benefit from the proven research, you're going to need to make sure you spend a bit of time and money getting a sock that fits correctly and is the right type for you. If, however, you purely just want to benefit from the psychological factors, then that becomes less relevant. You've got options of whether you go for a calf sleeve or a full length sock. And some people will prefer the comfort of a full length sock, whereas some people might actually so love their running socks that they want to stick with those. You can simply have a calf sleeve to go with it in addition. When it comes to triathlon, on the calf sleeve is the best option there as well because you can wear that under your wetsuit and simply put your socks on when you come into transition although it is worth noting that you're not allowed to have anything on your calves if it's a non-wetsuit swim and then you've got the full recovery tie or should I say compression tight I gave it away there I personally wouldn't wear those for training yes some are designed for that but I find them a little bit restrictive but they can be great for recovery and travel Long socks have another use in cycling and for some top level elite runners, aerodynamics. If you've ever been to a cycling time trial and noticed lots of cyclists wearing socks, if you look closely at those, you'll see fine lines which are there designed to help reduce the wind resistance. And in fact, Elliot Kipchoge in his breaking two hour marathon attempt wore arm sleeves and these were actually partly to help with those aerodynamics. But you will also see arm sleeves on runners when it comes to the cross country season in the winter and there they're normally being used more for the benefit of warmth. I wish there was more science out there, but if you enjoy wearing compression socks and feel they benefit you, then do it. I personally listen to my body, or in particular my calves, and I go through phases of when I'm wearing them and when I'm not. And I would love to hear from you guys. If you use any of the variations that I've talked about today, please let us know when you wear them and more importantly why. You can do that in the comments section below. Give us a like if you've enjoyed it. Remember, you can follow us on our social media channels. You can also subscribe to us here on YouTube.